Welcome along to a rather wet and blustery Donington Park. We're on the Grand Prix circuit this weekend for round 9 and 10 of the 2018 Radical SR1 Cup. The cars have already been out for qualifying. The first race is about to start and let's guide you through the way that they will line up. It's Ryan Harper Allen who starts on pole position and Patrick Lay will line up alongside. Row 2 of the grid is James Pinkerton, championship leader and Shane Stoney. And the third row of the grid sees Will Hunt and Chris Short with row 4 being Dean Warriner and Ross Elliott. And row 5, Simon Anderson and Mark Williams. Gavin McAlpine and Paul Clark are there on row six, head of David Thompson and David Tagg. And it's Peter Devlin and Stuart Mosley who will start at the very back of the grid. So in wet and blustery and damp and rather nasty conditions, race number one is about to get underway. Ryan Harper Allen, our pole sitter, lies second in the championship standings coming into this weekend. Lights go out and away he goes the Radical Shootout champion winner. He's got Patrick Lay trying to draw himself alongside as they splash their way up towards Redgate Corner for the first time. And Patrick Lay's going to try around the outside by the look of things all the way around the outside but onto the grass onto the curbs onto the mud that delays the car as the wheels spin up and that drops him down through the order Shane Stonely and James Pinkerton I think both able to carve their way through so Ryan Harper Ellen leads the race as they head down through the Craner curves for the first time. It's James Pinkerton that slotted himself through into second place, but he's looking to attack for the lead of the race. Ryan Harper Ellum a little bit sideways midway through the corner. You can see James Pinkerton struggling for traction as well, but he will take the lead of the race. You can see both of the cars dancing around on the very, very edge of Adesion. Their hand-cooked tyres having to work overtime. There's a spin for Paul Clark. He'll get his number 24 car pointing in the right direction. Here's Patrick Lay. He's looking to try and work his way up into third place if he can, and it looks as though the man from Bampton former MX5 racer has done just that yep through he goes up the inside at the double apex right hander at Coppies Corner and puts the Royal Motorsport car that qualified on the outside of the front row of the grid up into third position now what can you do about trying to close in on Ryan Harper Ellum that sits just ahead of him so James Pinkerton leads Ryan Harper Ellum is in second place Patrick lays there in third place the rest of the field all carving their way through the left and the right flick at the chicane that brings them onto the Grand Prix loop here at Donington Park we ride on board with second place Ryan Harper Ellum closes on the brakes onto the coattails of James Pinkerton accelerates the car up the short straight towards Goddard's there's somebody running very very wide indeed but just avoids going off onto the grass that's Shane Stoney former mini challenge champion in the Cooper class from a few seasons ago the battle for the lead of the race still rather close as they head in these difficult conditions greasy horrible wet damp conditions over the start finish line so that's the first 2.5 miles chalked into the book there's a spin for the Scotsman Mark Williams who just rejoins just ahead of Gavin McAlpine who thankfully saw him coming the race leaders down towards Redgate Corner still all of the time looking to try and push 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 to get himself right into contention is Patrick Lay in his newly acquired third place but the leading three there's not a lot between them somebody very very sideways heading out of the Melbourne hairpin now I think that might have been Peter Devlin at the wheel of the Gen 1 cars you can see conditions now starting to really deteriorate the Hancock tyres, treaded tyres, will be trying to get that water out of the way, but it looks as though certainly down at the bottom part of the circuit, down at the Melbourne hairpin and up towards this section here, McLean's corner, the weather has really closed in again as Patrick Lay is now looking to try and attack for what will be second place. He's got himself alongside and in front of Ryan Harper Ellum. They turn up towards the double apex right hander at Coppice Corner. They're still side by side. Good driving by both. Patrick Lay trying to feed in the throttle. You can see the steering input to try and correct the back end as it comes round, but he has managed to pick the pocket of Ryan Harper Ellum. It's Patrick Lay that's now up into second position. Ryan Harper Ellum is down into third and out front leading the race of course is James Pinkerton but the three of them still absolutely together onto the Grand Prix loop yet again down towards the Melbourne hairpin this is where they just need to be careful now downhill braking area which in wet conditions it's very, very, very easy to get caught out, as we saw from Shane Stoney on the first lap of the race. So out of the old hairpin, we ride back on board with Ryan Harper Ellen, looking to try and hunt down Patrick Lay that lies directly ahead. All of the time, whilst James Pinkerton is desperate to try and hang on to the lead of the race. All three of these very, very equally matched, to say the least. And now, by the look of things, it looks so like trying to run the outside is Ryan Harper Ellen. He nearly ran out of room there. He'll try and cut back on the exit and carry a bit more speed onto the start finish line and now he's picking up the toe of Patrick Lay that he's just lost the place to here they come up towards Redgate Corner they fan out from being nose to tail to side by side and Ryan Harper Ellum is going to return the favour yeah it goes back through but Patrick Lay is trying to brave it out all the way around the outside fantastic driving braves it out the less polished tarmac in the damp conditions giving that little bit more adhesion that's just enough so as to hang on to second place nothing Ryan Harper Ellum could do about it and now they are closing in on traffic which got out of the way as they went down through the Craner curves and all of a sudden James Pinkerton is under a little bit of pressure here Ryan Harper Ellum is trying to fight back to re-attack fantastic racing 
in the Radical SR1 Cup. We've seen very little to choose between Ryan Harper Ellen and James Pinkerton all season. And now that Patrick Lay has joined the championship, well, he is desperate to try and see what he might be able to do. Goes for the lead of the race up the inside as they head in towards McLean's corner and he is through. Patrick Lay at the wheel of the number seven Raw Motorsport prepared car takes the lead of the race. James Pinkerton's down to second and you can see the view that Ryan Harper Ellum had of that. Just was able to work his way through there, Patrick Lay. So he takes up the lead of the race, but there's still plenty of racing to go. You can see the car's still moving round as the drivers try and apply the throttle as quickly as they can coming out of the corners, but a little bit too quickly, just unsettles the car that little bit. Patrick Lay leads the race. James Pinkerton there in second place, who's failed to finish off the podium so far this season, has James Pinkerton. He really has had a fantastic season, the head of engine development, the man from Ramsey St. Mary's in Cambridgeshire, starting to try and close in on Patrick Lay. Ryan Harper Ellen breaks very, very, very late down at the Melbourne hairpin and lost a little bit of time there relative to the front two so he needs to just sort of calm down a little bit the man from Brackley and get on with it race instructor who of course is the Radical SR1 shootout winner for this year won this prize drive and has had a consistent season other than the one little blip the first round at Alton Park where he non-finished here they come over the start finish line another lap chalked into the book Patrick Lay leads the race James Pinkerton is there in second place but now starting to be caught by Ryan Harper Allen they head on to the brakes up towards Redgate corner and well already James Pinkerton is sideways before he even gets towards the corner the car very very sideways indeed there's contact sadly between himself and Ryan Harper Allen as James Pinkerton couldn't get the car back under his spell and that means that they both leave the scene of the crime but are they carrying damage on board here's Ryan Harper Ellum you can see him on the brakes trying to avoid James Pinkerton but contact between the left side of Ryan Harper Ellum's car and the front of James Pinkerton's and that unfortunately is causing a problem because it does look as though Ryan Harper Ellum is limping the car around the circuit and he's not going to be able to continue in this race an enormous shame for a driver that's already had some problems big 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 mistake for Peter Devlin heading into the Melbourne hairpin the Gen 1 SR1 gathered up as poor old Ryan Harper Ellum still limping his way around the circuit. That is a disaster to his championship hopes here in the first of the races at Donington Park. Here's Peter Devlin after his moment down at the Melbourne hairpin under attack from Simon Anderson, the MD from Telford, looking to try and squeeze his way through, goes up the inside of the Generation 1 Radical SR1 and is able to get through and ahead of Peter Devlin without too much trouble. The Leicestershire-based business consultant, his local circuit, you could argue, here on the Leicestershire, Nottinghamshire, Derbyshire border. So down through the Craner curves goes Simon Anderson, Peter Devlin. A few moments thereafter, you can see just how difficult the conditions look here. The rain and the awful damp weather that we've got. It's, it's gone from damp to rain to back to damp again. And down at this part of the circuit, the lowest part of the circuit, it's still very, very wet, to say the least. Patrick Lay has got a rotating car ahead of him as he heads up towards Redgate Corner. That looked as though it might have been possibly Sven Thompson. Indeed it is, yeah, the number 99 car in the hands of the man who runs Nielsen Racing has had a rotation. David Tagg also struggling for adhesion and arriving at the Melbourne Hairpin backwards is Gavin McAlpine who beautifully corrects the mistake and gets pointing in the right direction. Actually didn't lose a great deal of time, I wouldn't have thought, as a result of that. Now here's a quick replay. This is Peter Devlin coming up towards Redgate Corner and as he heads up towards Redgate, dives on the brake. The car instantly snatches over to the right-hand side, looks to try and rejoin the circuit and just avoids contact with Simon Anderson before it disappears into the gravel trap. And for Peter Devlin, well, that may well spell possible retirement by the look of things because that car has come to rest in the gravel trap there. Here's a good little fight that's going on. Number 21, Will Hunt, under pressure from Chris Short, the CEO from Wolverhampton, looking to try and see what he might be able to do. The Brighton-based estate agents just hanging on to the place at the wheel of that number 21 car currently. Will Hunt, who we have seen do good things so far this year. We've seen him on the podium on a few occasions, seconds and thirds. He's not had a race win. He's not going to get one of those today, I wouldn't have thought either. I think there's yellow flag still up at Redgate Corner. Yes, there is, as a result of that car of Peter Devlin, which is still rather stricken in the gravel. So they have to wait until the exit of the corner before they can start to pick the places up again. Now you can see our camera down at the old hairpin is really struggling in these wet conditions. It's sort of damp at the top part of the circuit. It's very, very wet down at this section. They turn their way through the right hander. You can see the spits of rain on the camera lens. That's what's getting thrown up into the driver's face. And it gives you an idea as just how little visibility there is. So Peter Devlin still sitting in the gravel trap. The officials taking the sensible decision in these difficult conditions to bring about the safety car, get the number five car out of harm's way, and then we can get the race back underway. So 
weaving from side to side to maintain tyre temperature is Patrick Lay. The good thing on this restart is that he's got the back marker, number 77, Simon Anderson, between himself and James Pinkerton, who's currently second in the race. And of course, James Pinkerton can't overtake that slower car until they reach the start finish line. So it gives Patrick Lay a good opportunity here to try and scamper away at this restart. Only now can James Pinkerton overtake the lapped car. And that's exactly what Patrick Lay would want at the start of this final lap. Daylight between himself and James Pinkerton. Simon Anderson's lap car is about to be attacked by both Chris Short and Will Hunt at the same time. They go three wide. Looks like Will Hunt carves his way through the middle of them and then gets sideways on the way out of the corner, which should allow Chris Short to retake third place by the look of things. Indeed, he has. Chris Short gets himself back ahead of the white car, but with the darker blue flashes down the centre of it in the hands of Will Hunt as they head down through the Craner curves on the final lap, onto the brakes, through the right, hander Chris Short hanging on to the position Will Hunt right behind him seeing whether he might be able to get himself back into the podium places and all of this whilst our race leader Patrick Lay is up the road and trying to disappear by the look of things round through Schwantz curve in towards the braking area for McLean's corner goes the squabble for third and for fourth position as up towards Coppice corner comes our race leader the man from Bampton looking as though he is on for a race victory here, Patrick Lay. We haven't seen Patrick out all season as yet so far this year. So on his first appearance of 2018, he is looking good here for a victory. So he leads the race. James Pinkerton is in second. And now Will Hunt's back into third again. Chris Short has gone missing somewhere. We saw him go round through McLean's corner, but we didn't see him appear back out of coppice. So it looks as though the number 11 car has gone missing on this, the very final lap of the race, in towards the braking area for the Melbourne hairpin. As long as he safely negotiates this, all he needs to do is be careful round the off-camber left-hander at Goddard that concludes the lap. of Patrick Lay is on for the win. James Pinkerton do his championship hopes no harm at all because his main championship rival, Ryan harper Ellum, is out of the race so Pinkerton will settle for second because that really hands him a good advantage in the championship here comes Patrick Lay he's going to come through and claim the first win of the weekend in the Radical SR1 Cup he takes the chequered flag and the victory second goes the way of James Pinkerton making it nine podiums out of the nine races so far and Will Hunt will complete the podium in third position his sixth podium visit of the year and his seventh win in the Rookie Cup as for fourth and fifth place, well, it was that blue car there, Mark Williams, who was under attack from Shane Stoney, but Shane Stoney slithers the car around through the Melbourne hairpin and onto the kerb, so that allows Mark Williams to have a small advantage heading up towards the final corner. Surely the light blue and darker blue car will come through to finish in fourth place, the second of the rookies home for Mark Williams. Shane Stoney will finish in fifth place, and it will be Dean Warrener who will complete the top six. Gavin McAlpine is there in seventh place, head of Ross Elliott in eighth, and then it's Simon Anderson and David Thompson that complete your top ten. So round nine of the Radical SR1 Championship for 2018, done and dusted. Let's hear from the top three. As the race progressed, the first three laps were pretty tough. The top three of us were sliding around everywhere. Um, then I just found my feet and um, picked off one, picked off the other, and then um, just, yeah, just found more and more grip as the race went on. It was really Larry. The car, the car was pretty set for a dry race, and obviously we changed the tyres at the last minute, which is yeah, a bit of a godsend that we got that done in time. Um, just really Larry, struggling to keep it on the track. Um, had a bit of an issue going to Redgate, lost the back end, I think, and then unfortunately Ryan just collected the front of me. Um, but yeah. It was very slippery out there. Um, it was one of those races where it got more exciting the weather it got. Um, finding some new experimental lines out there. Um, and towards the halfway point when the rain really started to come down, it was about bringing the car in one piece um, and as up the higher up the grid as you can. So yeah, happy to bring it back and have it in third as well. It was, uh, it was very challenging. Uh, a couple of hairy moments near the start. Uh, so it was a case of survival really, just being cautious and finishing the race.